So the next piece we're going to do is the crankshaft. And for the Acura, it was actually a V6, which meant it had two cylinder heads, and those cylinder heads allowed the pistons to kind of form a V as they were going up and down. Six pistons, it's very tricky timing-wise, and that timing is also attached to the, the crankshaft. So I'm going to just do the more traditional V4. So this is, this is from the Wikipedia. I will put a link to this in here. It's a great resource for, for understanding what's happening in a basic straight four engine. So what you have and why it's called a four stroke engine, just consider one of these pistons going up and down. What you're gonna do is suck in the fuel and air, compress it, light it on fire, and then you push out the exhaust. So one, two, compress, three, power, four, exhaust. That's your four stroke engine. And if you have four pistons going at once, at any given time, one of these pistons is gonna be under the power stroke, pushing around all of the other pistons. And so it's much easier to, to set the timing right and make sure that everything is being driven at all times by at least one of these pistons. Okay, so this crazy crankshaft, what we have here is the main bearing girdle. So there is a line going through the very center of this that everything is kind of rotating around. So here, this white dot, this is the main bearing journal at the middle of it. And then the connecting rods are attached to the connecting rod journal. So that makes sense. And we have to have this, this lever arm. So to rotate something takes a moment, torque. You can't just push on it. You have to have that lever arm, R cross F. So the length between the center of the main crankshaft journal and the distance all the way out to how far up this, this crankshaft is connected away from the center of that main journal. This is your torque, that's your R cross F. You're limited on the length of this in a couple different ways. So how far up versus down this goes, top dead center, bottom dead center, this is actually controlling the amount of volume that is displaced during this process. You can see this green connecting rod getting really close to the edge here of the engine. So just the geometry of the thing is going to um, constrain the dimensions of this for, for how long and how far away those, those connecting rods. You also want to, um, to look at the weight distribution on this. So if you look at more of a picture of this thing, the webbing, so that's this little piece that goes between the main journal and the connecting rod. The weight, put some extra weight on one side to kind of offset where this piston is so that it's not off balance. That's another piece of this. So quite a lot goes into this that is determining the timing of the engine, the volume displaced, the the stroke length, top dead center to bottom dead center, and the moment that is generated by each power stroke, the distance from the center of rotation to where that force from the piston is being assigned, so that R cross F, lots going into this main crankshaft. And of course, this is gonna be then attached to your transmission, the RPM of your motor versus the RPM of your car tires, and if you want power versus if you want fuel efficiency going down the highway. But this, this crankshaft, it's called a crankshaft in the old cars, you used to actually have a crank in the front of the car, <laughs> and you'd start it by getting in front of your car and cranking it up. And that that is what this, this crankshaft is. You've got the cams above, Here's the, um, the intake and the exhaust valves that are sitting above it. So, but, but for this project, let's just get through the crank. We'll do a very simple engine block that kind of holds everything in place up here. And then if you want to go farther and do the intake and exhaust valves, and we can even play around with some, some gears here, looking at how the cam is then attached to the crank. 
And so that this is also driving these little valves opening and closing through some, some gears over here. But we'll, we'll keep it to just the crankshaft and the engine block. And if you want to go further than that for your semester project, let me know and we can, we can really get into this. Okay, so let's hop over into Inventor. And what I want you to have is open up your IDW files from the parts that you had before. So this is our crankshaft is going to be coming in right here, radius of 1.125 or diameter of two and a quarter. So come back and use these dimensions is, is what we're going to start off with here. So I'm going to grab the diameter of this piston, 3.5 inches, and I'm actually going to make the top view of this thing just to get the spacing right. So if we think about the, the four pistons sitting in here, they have a diameter of three and a half. And inside that piston, our connecting rod is in there. So it has a width of 0.875. So I'm going to make a rectangle in here that has a width of 0.875, what that connecting rod is doing. The sides of this, so the webbing, I'm going to make that equal to um, half an inch thick webbing on either side of where that connecting rod is going to slip up into there. And between these things, so giving enough room for the pistons to kind of sit side by side, I'm going to put two inches between webbing. So once you have one of these kind of figured out, go ahead and use the copy command hold down your shift key and you can select multiple things at once. So I selected the entire thing, grabbing a base point on the side of the webbing so that I can copy and paste this whole thing over. And I guess you could use an array command with this too, but copy is pretty easy when we just have four of them. So this will just give me a template showing me distances that each of those bearings is gonna be extruded out. Okay, for the main bearing journal, I'm going to start this at the very end, which means we're going to have to make a working plane at the very end. I'll offset this, and we're going out 2 plus a half plus a half of that 0.875, so a little bit odd of a dimension here. That will bump it to the very end of the crankshaft, and then the diameter of the main bearing, I'm actually going to give it the same diameter that's going to go through the connecting rod to hopefully make it a little bit more balanced when this thing is rotating. So 2.25 inch diameter, and I will extrude this up to the first piece of webbing. For the web, so this is going to connect the main bearing to where the connecting rods are up above it. And I'm going to go ahead and bump the center to center distance of this as the diameter. So 2.25 inches, and we're going to have the main below and the connecting rod bearing above. So putting together this bearing, I'm going to create a lower side of this, and it has to be a little bit larger. So that it's balanced as this is rotating around. So we'll have four inches below, two inches above, and I'll go ahead and use the constraints to bump a line to the side of this thing, trimming that out, and then using the mirror command once you get this where it needs to be, and trimming it out some more. So this is, again, the webbing that's going to connect the main bearing to where the, the connecting rod is going to, to be up above this thing. Okay, close out this loop, make sure everything is connected, and we'll go ahead and extrude this piece of it out half an inch. So you can kind of look to see that it's matching up with that template that we made earlier on there. Continuing on, let's go ahead and add the connecting rod journal that's bumped up from the top. If you 
kind of hover over an edge, it'll give you the center point of that arc. So 2.25, and that is the diameter of the large side of the connecting rod. The thickness of the connecting rod, that's that 0.875. So we're using those di diameters and lengths off of our template, making sure everything lines up as we go. We have some symmetrical parts, so let's go ahead and use a mirror command. We'll have to make a working plane to mirror objects around. So putting that working plane right down the middle of our connecting rod journal, we can then go ahead. The, the mirror command is up here under patterns. So these little triangles. And you can either grab the object off the drawing or off the left-hand side. So I'm just grabbing the right extrusion, grabbing the mirror line, and now we have our web on both sides of our connecting rod journal. Coming back down to continue the main bearing journal. So this is the one that's going straight down the center of the crankshaft that everything is rotating around. And we're gonna keep that at that 2.25 inch diameter. The distance between the webs is two inches. So I'll pop that out to two inches. And again, check everything with the template, make sure that we are um, getting everything lined up. This is a space between the pistons at the top of this thing. The next piece, so we have two pistons going up, two pistons going down. I'm gonna Go ahead and copy this. Make sure you're copying it onto your clipboard. And I will then paste this in and rotate it so that my next piston is underneath that main bearing rather than above it. So coming back, pasting it, rotating it. I'm going to rotate it around the axle of the main bearing. 90 degrees, it should let you snap it into place and we will continue with the same extrusion heights from here on out. So another half an inch and this will bring us to piston number two. So now we're going to um, be coming down underneath the main journal bearing for this next connection. So again, just go ahead and hover over the edge. That'll give you the center point, 2.25 inch diameter. End the sketch. The width of the connecting rod is 0.875. So we're gonna extrude this out. Once you get this pattern going, you can kind of get a little bit faster, but each step of the way, line it back up with that template. So again, we're gonna use a mirror plane and copy that web on either side of the connecting rod journal. This is, the entire crankshaft is symmetrical. So once we make it around to the very center of this thing, we can stop and mirror the entire left half over to the entire right half. So rather than extruding this next 2.25 inch main bearing, the, the full two inches, I'm just gonna go one inch and that will give me the exact halfway point that I can then just mirror the entire chunk across. So we've got half of it, you can see it lines up with our template. And the last little bit here, making sure we select for our um, mirror command. So just go through every extrusion, every single mirror that we did. So go down the list and make sure every single piece of this is selected, that you're not missing out on anything. The mirror plane is just the very end of that last journal bearing that we put in place and there we've got it. We've got our crankshaft. So two pistons up, two pistons down. These guys are all rotating around that main bearing journal and the next piece of this will be assembly. So we're going to add the pistons on top of this thing.